Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are greatly blessed. I want you to know I'm praying for you, as are many people praying for you and praying for those people that you love. Well, I want to look at a passage of Scripture today that I really hope lingers with you over this next 24 hours because I think many of us could find ourselves in this story. And my prayer is that as you pray through this, that you would be deeply touched uh, in, these, in these next coming hours. Well, the story we're going to read is of Jesus comes across a group of his disciples, followers, who've had, uh, who are having an argument with some scribes and, and a father of a boy who's been brought to him who is possessed by a demon who's in need of healing, and they can't do it. And Jesus sees this argument and he asks the question in Luke chapter 9, verse 16. He says, he asks them, what are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son. He's a spirit that makes him unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and it becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him immediately, it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said to him, from childhood, it's often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you're able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you're able, all things can be done for the one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. And the story goes on and Jesus heals this boy, delivers this boy. And then in verse 28, it says, And when he'd entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind can come out only through prayer. This kind can come out only through prayer. It's just a fabulous passage of Scripture because to be honest with you, I find myself in this passage of Scripture and I think many of us do. Jesus is dealing constantly with faithlessness. Jesus is constantly believing with people who don't believe. And he comes across this father and this father, when he has this Uh, conversation with the father eventually the father says I believe but help my unbelief I believe because Jesus has said to him you you know I can and and in many of our lives aren't we the same don't we come to that place where sometimes we go well I know that God can I just don't know that God will I've heard people say that to be honest with you I've said it in my own life in years gone by I know God can but as to whether he will some scholars suggest, uh, suggest that sometimes we might think like this. I know God could, but there's so many important things. Would he worry about my thing or who I'm praying for? And, and, and what Jesus confronts is this whole idea that faithlessness is about a lack of confidence in God himself. And, and, and it's because the person praying has not, in a sense, experienced sufficient enough conversion within their life to come to that place to know that God is in, is at work and that God will respond. See, in Jewish tradition, the reason it says right at the beginning, uh, sorry, right at the end where it says, um, uh, when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind can come out only through prayer, is that Jewish tradition was, was that, that God acted according to and in response to prayer. See, what happens when we pray? When we pray, we, we are doing a number of things. We're acknowledging God as God, that God, I can't do this, so you need to do it. Uh, we're also, therefore, what we're doing is worshipping God. And what Jesus is saying here is that this, this, this step of faith is going to need deeper prayer. This step of faith is going to need longer prayer. And so as we're praying for people we love, our sons and daughters, our husbands, our wives, friends, brothers, sisters, parents, as we're praying, pray for someone you love doesn't end because, well, I prayed for them for a couple of days. But rather praying for someone you love is a commitment to praying for as long as it takes. For as long as it takes. 
My grandmother prayed for me for years and years and years, and very likely I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. That our prayer is this: is that we carry for someone the belief that God is at work and we hold them up to God. We hold them up to prayer, almost to get God's attention in a sense, not that He needs reminding. And so, so prayer is, is happening the whole time. So we hold it up to God because there's something else happening is that as we pray, we are changed. The more we pray, the more we come to accept God's will, the more we come to understand and to see differently than that which we uh, could have in any other way. This father who comes, Lord, Lord I believe, help my unbelief. Um, what he's really saying is, God, you do it in me. I want to do my best. And there are many of us like that. So I want to encourage you in your prayer for praying for people. Make a decision. You're going to pray long for however long it takes. You're going to hold these people in your heart and that burden in your life. Number two, that you're going to acknowledge that God is the one who can. And three, that you are going to be experience conversion. I will be changed as I pray in my life because that is what's happening. It's a fabulous passage of Scripture. Reflect on that today. I really encourage you. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And God will. And what's His answer? Pray. Because as you pray, you are changed and your faith is built. Well, as we finish today, I want to conclude by asking you, would you, would you help me? Would you financially support me in proclaiming the gospel uh, to people all over the world? The truth is there are many people who need their faith built today. Jesus said, go into all the world and share the gospel. And the reality today, the, the most wonderful way we can do that is through technology because technology reaches far more people than we ever would be able to do, if, even if we travelled and went face to face. It's amazing how many people tell me stories of how this has blessed them in their life. Many of you tell me that you came across it during, uh, during Lent earlier this year. Many people tell me that they came across it through some advertising campaign that came about. That was because some people got together and they said, well, why don't we help share the gospel so more people can find it? And I want to ask you, would you help me to, to help people find this proclamation of the gospel? I can't do this without your help. Uh, I'm not embarrassed to ask. I feel very proud to ask because I'm asking you to participate in ministry. And just like I can't do it without your help, in many ways, many of you, this is not what you do, but together we can do it together. So I'm inviting you into ministry with me. I'm inviting you to come and stand with me and together let's proclaim the gospel, share the gospel with others. To everybody who gives, I call them our faith builders because that's what you are. You're a faith builder. You're building the faith of people. And to people who give on a regular basis, whether weekly or fortnightly or monthly, and you've set up an arrangement to do that where it comes, it comes all the time. To you, our Faith Builder Partners, I can't do this without you. To all of our Faith Builder Partners, I want to say that we have a special recording, a special meeting that I have for you and some material I want to send you because I literally can't do this without you. And I'm so grateful for your support and your encouragement and to be able to personally uh, be able to thank you for for you making it possible to share faith. Can I ask you today, would you prayerfully consider standing with me in sharing Jesus with people so that people's faith are built, so that many people who are like this dad in the scriptures who says, I believe, help my unbelief, that together you and I can help them build their faith as we introduce them more deeply to the love of God. Uh, the world is so desperate today. Have a look at our television sets. Have a look at what's happening in the world. The world desperately needs God. And that's what we're trying to do in this ministry is share God with the world, with those we love, with those we care for. And so I'm asking you, would you please stand with me and together let's proclaim the gospel. You can go to this address on the screen or go to the Give tab. And uh, I would be really grateful uh, that together we can share the gospel more powerfully and change more people's lives. Let me pray for you today. Uh, wherever you are, as you prayerfully consider standing with me and joining with me in ministry. Loving Father, I thank you today that you see every man and woman listening to the sound of my voice right now. And Lord, in so many ways, so many of us have faith and Lord, and so many of us need to pray even more, build my faith. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. 
Lord God, I just pray that today people would grow in their understanding of that. I pray, Lord God, for every person that gives. Lord God, I thank you for their contribution. I pray, Lord God, that that you would work more powerfully in their life. And as they surrender and as they step out and as they worship you in their giving, that they would encounter your blessing in their lives that I know so well in my own life, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that that together we are proclaiming the gospel all over the world and people are discovering you, being transformed by you, growing in faith by you. Thank you, Lord God, for all those who are with, with me in helping me. And I give you thanks and I give you praise and I give you glory for you are God. We adore you, we glorify you, we praise you for you are magnificent. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.